All right, what's poppin'? It's your boy, Big Rich, Queens, New York City, where we get busy. Tuesday evening business. You know it's my day off, so there's a little edibles in the mix. Ladies and gentlemen, come on in, wipe your feet on the rug, throw some smoke in the atmosphere. I just lit up some Oreos. You look it up. Unbelievable. Big Rich always has the flavors. Let's get down to business. This next article coming out of the Costa Nostra News by my man, Ed Scarpo. Salute to you, and let's sprinkle a little respect on your name. Let's get right into it. Behind bars with the Genevieve family associate Fotios Freddy Gias, number one suspect in the Whitey Bulger murder, and others. Quote, Freddy was extremely mild-mannered. Every morning we would pick up the three of them for trial. I always patted down and shackled Freddy. He always walked out of the cell first, followed by Ty and Negro lagging behind last. They walked out in the same order every day for four months. That stuck in my mind because I knew Negro was a boss, but to me, Freddy seemed to take on that role. That's one of the things that Ed Scarpo learned during a recent chat with a former deputy marshal who spent considerable time on the job getting to know numerous members and associates of organized crime in New York, including former Genovese family acting boss Arthur Negro and brothers Ty and Freddie Gias, both former members of the Genovese family's Springfield crew. And salute to my peoples in Springfield. Freddie Gias also is the number one son suspect in the brutal murder of James Whitey Bulger, who was found beaten to death inside a West Virginia prison in October of 2018. In 2011, former Genovese acting boss Arthur Negro, who oversaw Springfield from the Bronx, and Fotios, a.k.a. Freddy, and Ty were found guilty of a litany of crimes, including the 2003 murder of Adolfo Big Al Bruno, the Genovese family capo, who was known to wear Hawaiian shirts and puff on oversized stogies, who had overseen the Springfield crew when he was shot to death. Helping put the trio away was Anthony Bingy Arellata, who escaped the noose by flipping for the feds when he was arrested for Bruno's murder. Disgracia! He went on to be the key witness against his former cohorts. Freddy, who was sentenced to life in prison in 2011 after a three-week trial in New York City, worked as an enforcer for Bingy and helped him pull off the murders of Bruno and Associates Gary Westerman. In addition, Freddy was part of a plot to extort a local strip club owner for $12,000 a month. He and Bingy also plotted other murder schemes against local rivals that were never carried out. The younger Gia's brother, Ty, amassed a violent rap sheet alongside his brother and had worked as Aralada's muscle and met with the same fate at trial. Negro, the acting boss who oversaw the Springfield crew from the Bronx, also was sentenced to life in prison. He died in 2019 while serving the sentence. May he rest in peace. The Gia's brothers were originally sentenced to the same federal prison in Kentucky, but have since been split up to maximum security federal penitentiaries in California for Ty and West Virginia for Fotios. Working for the marshals, you spend a considerable amount of time with inmates, the former deputy marshal, who would only speak if he was granted anonymity, told Cosa Nostra News recently. The following is in the words of the former deputy marshal. I definitely got to know some of the inmates on a personal level. Probably the most interesting was Fotios Diaz. I was assigned to his trial along with his brother and Artie Negro. I was shocked when I saw that he killed Bulger. It's weird to think I have some sort of connection to some of these guys from spending so much time with them. I didn't know anything about the Gia's brothers, Negro, or anything involving Springfield, Massachusetts, organized crime before I was assigned to the trial. The only background info I got from my boss was that Freddie and Ty beat up a guard at some jail that they were at, so watch your back. I sat behind Freddie for the duration of the trial. Freddie's lawyer would hand him a tin of Altoids every morning. Every single day, Freddie would take one, pop in his mouth, turn around, and offer me one. Every day, I turned it down simply for the optics of it but he still offered it. Ty was the complete opposite. The first day of jury selection, Judge Castell pronounced their last names as Gaius. This drove Ty insane. Inside the courtroom, his face turned bright red and he kept leaning into his lawyer whispering. Shortly after, we took a break and escorted them back into the holding cells and Ty exploded. He firmly believed the judge pronounced his name that way as some sort of a direct insult. I was stunned at his level of anger. Me and three other marshals and Freddie all had a hand on Ty, telling him to calm down. After a few minutes, we convinced him it was an honest mistake and he accepted it. That's when I knew Ty was nuts. Ty got extremely comfortable around me. Maybe because I was younger and I wouldn't bark orders at him like the other marshals. Ty started off by slowly talking about his criminal history. He would describe in detail bar fights he had been in while living in Springfield. I broke the ice with Ty by saying I was glad he didn't have a Boston accent. 
That made him laugh, and he started talking nonstop after that. I noticed as Ty let his guard down, Freddy would watch Ty talk, then his eyes would dart over to me as if to carefully evaluate my reaction. Anthony Arellata took the stand against the three of them during the trial. As we walked back to MCC one day, Ty gave me his reasoning as to why Arellata flipped. Ty went into great detail on how he had an affair with Arellata's wife. He explained how Arellata's wife wore a dog collar while they were having anal sex. Ty, Negro, and three other marshals and I were all laughing at Ty's story. Freddy was stone-faced staring at Ty. It was clear he didn't want Ty talking so much. Ty didn't pick up on this. Ty then turned to me and said, maybe the marshal would put me in the same cell as Arellata for a few minutes. Freddy immediately snapped and said, that's enough, and keep your mouth shut for the rest of the walk. First of all, salute to Ed Scarpa and Costa Nostra News for the intriguing story about the Gia's brothers. Of course, a small story in the bigger picture of things, but very interesting. First of all, salute to everybody in Springfield, Massachusetts that be throwing some smoke in the air and listening to mob stories. We appreciate you and salute you. Like, comment, share, subscribe. Tell a friend to subscribe. We're slowly inching our way to 12,000, and then when we cross 12,000, we get to 15. Brick by brick, we shall build this empire. That's what I say. Let me know what you're smoking on, and let me know what city you're smoking in. Big Ridge, Queens, New York City. Business, and we will talk soon. Salute.